Well, hello friends, how are you today? Uh, Joe Machado here with another uh, video at WSIB Truth Matters. Anyway, I've got uh, some time in my hand, so I figured I would do a quick video. Uh, today I was doing a couple of my favorite things. Uh, well, actually one of them is one of my favorite things. The other one is I absolutely hate it. Um, I had to go to Toronto to a uh, Portuguese uh, fish market to get some uh, some fresh fish flown in from the Azores this morning for uh, for tomorrow, Easter Friday, so a good Friday. So that's the one thing that I like because I love fish, especially fish from back home. Uh, the other thing uh, was uh, driving to Toronto, which I absolutely hate. It reminds me of the thousands of times over the last 30 plus years that I spent on the 401 driving to Toronto to the WSIB for meetings or hearings, or the tribunal, and I absolutely hated it. I never liked traffic, especially when the WSIB was on uh, 2, uh, two Bloor Street, uh, 2 Bloor Young, which is right in the middle of town. And it didn't matter what time you got out of the day you tried to get out of the city. Oh man, it was awful. So I spent two hours in the car this morning getting into Toronto. It'll be a long time before I go back. So I hope you're enjoying this beautiful day. It looks like spring is finally gonna stick around. And uh, so I wanted to talk to you about a, an issue that, uh, you know, I think everybody needs a little bit of hope. If we don't have hope, uh, we don't really have anything that drives us, nothing to look forward to. And uh, it can be a pretty much empty existing if you don't have a little bit of hope. And I know that you all listening to this or watching this video know that it's very, very hard to get any sort of hope from the WSIB. I guess the only hope you can wish for is you hope not to get screwed by them. But in my experience, that doesn't uh, often bode that way. And of course, if you don't fight for your rights, then you're always going to get screwed. So I've been handling a case for one of our members at WSIB Settlements. Pretty straightforward case. I've handled literally hundreds of these over the years. And I just wanted to tell you a little bit about it. So this it's a pre-1990 claim. This person was injured in 1986, actually the same year I had my injury. She was pretty young and uh, was given a pension. She couldn't go back to her pre-accident job. The employer didn't have anything for her. So she got involved with vocational rehabilitation services. It's now called work reintegration. Before then it was labor market re-entry. The WSIB has gone and made all of these different names and changed the way they provide that kind of surface over the, or service over the years. It's the same bullshit now as it always then. Anyway, they, uh, the whole idea was to try and help her get back to some kind of job that she could do uh, physically because she had permanent restrictions as a result of her pension. And so uh, she worked with a vocational rehabilitation counselor, that's what they were called at the time. And then her file was referred for a, uh, to a placement advisor. So these were individuals that the WSIB had on their payroll. They worked with vocational rehabilitation caseworkers to uh, help uh, place uh, injured workers with potential employers where there would be a, a cost sharing training on the job. And uh, so the incentive for employers was to hire injured workers and uh, give them a shot for three, six months uh, where they could pay, or the WSIB would pay the full amount of the benefits. And that, that included the loss of earnings benefits, or they were called total temporary back then, uh, for the duration of the program, or they could do a 50-50 split. In fact, I hired a bunch of my staff over the years. Uh, they were injured workers. I always thought that if I needed somebody and I, could give someone an opportunity to get a job even in a new career it was a win-win and I did sponsor a bunch of those programs with uh, with some of my staff surprisingly enough the WSIB was very cooperative in 
do any of that back then. But anyway, um, so with the placement advisor, he found a, a placement for her. And uh, there was an agreement for her to uh, work for this employer uh, for three months. The WSIB would pay the full benefits, and then after three months, the employer would pay the the, the uh, another three uh, three uh, three months of benefits, and then she would be hired on, on uh, as a full-time employee. And so it worked out well. She was hired on, um, and um, but here's what happened. The WSIB knew at the time. It's all. It's in the documentation. It's the in the placement advisor's closing report. It was the vocational rehabilitation caseworker's closure report that she was at a wage loss. She was at a significant wage loss. It was about two dollars, two dollars and fifty cents an hour. And despite that, they encouraged her to take the job, and in fact, supported it. So at that time, they should have paid her, or at least advised her that she was entitled to, at that time, it was called the Section 135.4 Supplement. It's since changed. Uh, it's now called the 147.4 Supplement, or Section 147.4 Supplement, which is the section of the Act, the Workers' Compensation Act. And um, But they never did. So she went for six months at a wage loss and she continued with the employer for another couple of months. And unfortunately, the employer uh, was sold, the company was sold, and um, the new employer didn't, uh, didn't uh, keep her on and in fact uh, laid off a bunch of other staff. So uh, she advised the WSIB and the WSIB again offered vocational rehabilitation services and uh, she was uh, provided with services for about uh, three months. The file was again referred to a uh, placement advisor, again, the second time. And uh, the placement advisor was able to find another job placement for her. Again, a, a sponsored training in the job program where the WSIB would pay uh, the percentage of her uh, wages and the employer potential employer would pay the balance. It worked out well and uh, she was able to get hired on by the employer at that time. Uh, but again, she was at a wage loss and at this at that point it was uh, it was more than uh, before. It was about 350 an hour or something like that. I don't have my calculations in front of me, but uh, anyway, they uh, again failed to advise her that she would be entitled to uh, a section 135.4 supplement to top up her wage loss. Uh, it wouldn't completely make up the difference, but it, it would help. So they did it. And uh, she went again, hired by this employer, uh, earning uh, at a wage loss. And unfortunately, uh, or the WSIB again made note in the closure report, the, the placement advisor and the vocational rehabilitation caseworker, that she was at a wage loss, they encouraged her to take the job, and uh, and so she did. And it's not up to the worker to request for a supplement or any other benefits they're not aware of, uh, particularly uh, benefits that are within the WSIB's responsibility to adjudicate and inform the worker that they may be uh, entitled to them. That's their job. So, so this lady um, got the job. If anybody has bad luck, I'll tell you, she's definitely one of them. After about three months working full time, three or four months, uh, the, uh, the company went bankrupt. So she lost her job again. And uh, this time she was on her own. And the last 30 years, Awful, just absolutely awful. And that three hundred and eighty-three dollars a month, I believe that's what it was back in in uh, nineteen eighty-nine. Uh, it's since increased, but that could have made a huge difference 
in her life. It would be an extra paycheck. It would have been a significant difference. But unfortunately, that didn't happen because the WSIB failed. Over about eight people were involved in this file. Claims adjudicators, vocational rehabilitation, caseworkers, placement advisors, pensions adjudicators, all of them. Nobody thought to tell this lady that she was entitled to a section 140, 135 for something. Just sick, just absolutely fucking sick. So anyway, uh, here's where the hope part came in. I, uh, I did a uh, WSIB case audit of her file. She'd had about two previous lawyers uh, dealing with her case for other matters. They didn't get anywhere with it. None of them even dealt with this part of the file. It's, that's beyond me, but hey. So um, I was actually quite baffled. So I put together these submissions. I've done them hundreds of times over the years. There's only about a half a dozen people at the WSIB who are still proficient in pre-1990 legislation. But when, the, when they sent her a letter after they received the submissions, and she panicking, she uh, she sent it to me and she says, I don't know what to do. And I said, don't worry about it. I said, just relax, don't worry about it. This is just some idiot who has absolutely no clue what he's doing. And, um, and then some other schmuck is probably pulling his strings to send you in a, in a wild goose chase for information they don't need. I mapped it all out for them in my submissions, the law, the policy, when the, 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 when the supplement can re be reviewed, at which times, according to the law, the section of the act. Um, I referenced uh, the very specific uh, sections of the vocational rehabilitation closure report and the placement advisor closure report on both instances where they confirmed that she was gonna be out of wage loss, that they encouraged her to get the job despite knowing she was gonna be out of wage loss. And that's when they should have paid her the supplement, but they did not. And then the, all of the information, there was about 10 items of information they requested in the file. Uh, job history since 1990, uh, where she looked for work, uh, did she get any retraining? If she lost a job, why did she lose a job? Uh, just stupid nuts, it's bullshit. That just meant to send her in a wild goose chase and hopefully give up. That's not gonna happen. So anyway, um, I told her specifically what we needed from the CRA uh, to uh, not to support the argument. The argument doesn't need any support. Uh, the bottom line is this is worth about 250 grand and they have to pay and they know that. There's absolutely no way to get away from paying. But the information needed was to show um, that there was a wage loss two years after the uh, supplement should have been paid, which in fact there was a wage loss. And um, so CRA gave her the runaround, told her they didn't know what she was asking for. And despite me telling her specifically, write it down, it's option C forms and T4 slips. Um, so then she, uh, they gave her the runaround. I said, listen, go to your MP. They know what to do. They should be able to help you. They have a direct line into the CRA. She called back all flustered. She says, Joe, I, they, they're saying they don't know what, what it is, what I'm talking about. So by this time, I'm not happy. And I sent the, her MP a very pointed letter. And I said, this is specifically what you need to do. All right, this is a constituent. I know that you know what this is. I don't know why you haven't bothered to get it or your staff, but I know you can get it. You have a direct line to CRA. Anyway, within a week, the information was delivered to her. So this case is worth uh, over a quarter of a million dollars. And um, they have absolutely uh, no out but to pay. But they had some schmuck. She sent me the letter. They had some schmuck write a letter. Oh, we received your submissions and we need this, 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 and this. It was about, I don't know, uh, 
10 items of information that they said they needed, which they don't, none of the information is relevant because all of it, everything they requested was after the, v, the vocational rehabilitation. It was after they had already screwed her twice. That information is required when you make the initial determination, which they already had it to make the determination to make sure that the earnings calculation was done properly. And I did that in my submissions to them to point out where uh, the wage loss originated. So uh, she was panicking. I said, don't worry about it. I said, there's only a handful of people at the WSIB, and I'll use this hand to tell you that no pre-1990 legislation, I know who they are very well because I dealt with them extensively. And I said, don't worry about it. Because, uh, this information, earnings information, and where you worked, and how many jobs you had, and a job search list of all of these jobs, and what happened if you lost a job, and how much did you look for another job, and did you get any of the uh, additional education, or take courses, or whatever. None of that shit matters, none of it. And if they had somebody at the WSIB who would reviewed that submission that I provided, they would have known that. It was a roadmap for the for the, uh, for the dumbest idiot to figure out what they needed to do, what they needed to review, and to get this paid. So, friends, I wanted to share this with you because I know that sometimes it's easy to lose hope. And, um, and especially if you think that there's something wrong with your case, but you really don't know what it is, and somebody hasn't been able to tell you, uh, you can lose hope. But, um, you know, I've, I've been known to sniff out a hundred, a thousand, and a million. And if it's owed, I will sniff it out and I'll get it. I'm not saying this to brag, but I do know this situation like the back of my hands. And uh, if you lost hope, visit WSIBSettlements.com and tell me a little bit about your case. And if there's anything, anything at all that can be done, it doesn't matter if you were injured in 1980, 1990, or 2024. If there's something to be done in your case, we can help you. All right, friends. So anyway, it was good spending this little bit of time with you. I hope that you have a an amazing Easter holiday. For those of you who are Christians, uh, it's important to focus on the death of Christ, why he did it, and the resurrection. It's an important thing for all of us, us believers. And uh, as always, my friends, and until next time, take care.